You ready? Hi, this is Whiskey Fire Department. We're here for part four of my interview with my grandfather. We're talking World War II. He was in the Navy and was on a ship. If it hadn't been for the war and hadn't been for the ship, I wouldn't have met my wife. Exactly, and that's what we're talking about today, my grandma. So, how long were you in the military before you met your beautiful wife? Two years. Two years. Two years. So you were probably ready to meet a beautiful wife. Well, I, I, I was on the move all the time. We just come in, they give us leave and leave, vacation, and send us back to sea as quick as they can get a hold of us and get us satisfied and get our family satisfied. So I did that once and did it the second time. And when I got ready to go the third time, they wouldn't let me ship out. My crew was ready, I was ready. <coughs> Pardon me. But then I, I, I was happy with my crew and I'd been there a while, I got promoted and I was in second command and, and been with them a long time. So we all fell out one morning for a ship. The crew was all me on assembly dock and they get us ready to board us a bus or a truck or something to take us to the ship. And so all of a sudden somebody said, Taylor, you to fall out. So I looked over and I said, what? What do you mean? The whole crew? No, just you. Oh, well, why? I said, well, why am I being pulled out? Did, did I do something wrong? No, didn't have to be wrong. You've got a presidential citation coming and we've got to hold you here until the Secretary of the Navy comes down and presents it to you. Wow, so the Secretary of the Navy yeah, gave yeah, it to coming you. Coming in. And it, cool. it consists of a parade mm -hmm. and put me up on the night and band parade and everything else, huge. And so we got to hold you here to the Secretary of the Navy and get here. So we're gonna hold you. All right, so they pulled me aside, my crew left, and a couple of weeks went by and nothing happened. They said, well, the Navy's having trouble getting the Secretary down here and we're gonna put you on shore duty until they oh, come. So, so you I, went, that's why you went to shore duty, yeah, and, okay. And I said, what, what kind of duty are you gonna give me? He said, well, you're a boat's mate, you're handling boats, and we're gonna put you on the Liberty launches from my base to New Orleans, be running Liberty launches. I said, that's good, that, yeah. that's great. And they had our own barracks on a barge, so we had our own private living quarters, and there I was running Liberty launches on an hourly basis out of, the, out of the base to New Orleans. So that worked out well. So you would take the ship to New Orleans? I, I, I know. I was stationed there okay. in the base, the naval oh, base, okay. but not on the base. Mm -hmm. They put us in a barge with our own private living quarters, oh. secluded and awesome. private. And yeah. we could eat, sleep, and drink, and everything but entertain ladies. You couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I, I had the pleasure of being on that barge and being at Mount Liberty, and I enjoyed it very much. I yeah. enjoyed it. I bet after a I couple tours overseas. On, on top of that, they would, since I was an excellent uh, coxswain, excellent boatswain mate, I'd go into the shipyards where they build these PT boats and on every boat, and I'd bring them out into the Mississippi River and they'd put them aboard ships and ship them out. So I really had a very luxury duty job. I enjoyed it immensely. That's so that happened in September, mm -hmm. and then lo and behold, uh, in, in November and December, I went ashore one night and when you- Into New Orleans. Yes, if we was in Algiers and the only way you can get to New Orleans, you get to Canal Street is by ferry. So in the wintertime, the Navy all wore blue uniform. There's a sea of blue at Liberty time, five or six o'clock into mm -hmm. Canal Street. And then when we leave at night, we straggle aboard and get out. So it, it went on for a couple of months and one in, that, in December, um, that same year, I, w I was waiting for the Liberty ship, I mean, not Liberty, but the... Ferry? Ferry. Yeah. At, at, you see there, you're an excellent interviewer, too. I was story. waiting for the ferry to come in, and I stopped at an American BC drugstore, a BC drugstore, and I go in there, and there's a lady sitting up, a French lady sitting up at the counter drinking a Coke, and I went over and met her, and she was very attractive, and I said, well, uh, and she they interested me, and I said, well, look, why don't you stick around a little longer and we'll go have something to eat? And she says, look, young man, I'm not going to stick around anywhere. I told my father I'd be home by 12 o'clock, and I got 30 minutes. You go no. for 30 minutes, you get 30 minutes, but I'm going That's home. That's right. Good. She's not a rule breaker. No, not a rule. Let me know that she loved her father and a baby. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, let me have your phone number. So I had a little black book out. 
Iris Marie Dupin. Yeah, some made a note of it. Yeah. She, she left. I went to the ferry, went back to the base. January come, nothing. February come, nothing. March came, and I looked, I didn't have a date. I looked in the near Iris's phone book. Oh, so I, it's I, I in a phone book? No, uh, in yep. a little black book. Sailors keep a little black book. Oh, oh your little black book. My little book. black book. Oh. My little black book. There are a lot of Russian names in there, too. <laughs> so, so I called her. Yes, I, there's a movie right, the theater right by my home. You come over and we'll go to this. So I went. I never stopped going. Mm. There on. So what was about her, her personality that made you? Oh, she's, she's French. She's tall, mm -hmm. handsome. She weighed 117 pounds and 5'8". Oh, wow. that, yeah. that tells you what's attractive. She's, my grandmother was very elegant. Elegant. Elegant is the word. She speak, yeah. spoke Sounds a little French. Sounds better than handsome. Spoke, spoke <laughs> a little French, too. So yeah, that's, that didn't hurt. Ducanet is her last name, yeah. so very French. And her mother, her grandmother was French, and she enjoyed her, and that's who taught her thought it was French. But to make a long story short, I just kept going every night I was there. Mm -hmm. And I met her uncle, he was a bus driver, and what he did was he, he looked, lapped me over where it wouldn't cost me but seven cents to go see her every night and Aww. go there and back. So they must have liked you too. He you did, know, huh? he did. And I had a gift of gab, and he loved her. So to make, a, make a long story short, I just enjoyed it very immensely. And then, then all of a sudden, they decided they're going to ship me out. They, uh, so I said, "Well, this has got not good news." But the ship we were going to put me on was in dry dock, being converted to a troop transport and a mule transport to Missouri mules to go to Calcutta, India, to go across the mountain range. They couldn't have. They didn't have a bomber or a transport to fly over the mountain. So the Navy decided and the Army decided that they would do it with mules, pack mules. Oh, so you mean really a mule? Yes. They were taking mules? Mules. Well, okay. Missouri mules, they weigh 2,000 pounds. That's where my mind went. I was thinking, yeah, yeah they have and like they, little they, four wheelers they, called mules they, now. They, like, they, had to, they had to build 460 stalls on that mm -hmm. ship to carry the mules, and then they had to modify the ship to carry the troops. And then you got to feed them? Yeah, yeah. and so they put me in Logistics charge of the ship. That. While it was in dry dock, mm -hmm. and that happened in June, and I, I knew I was going to be there three or four months prepping the ship, and so I proposed to her in June, and she said yes. So you so met her like in March, and then I met her in December. December, but didn't I, I, see I her. I met her in December in '43, and I married her in December in July of '44. Oh, that was a quick uh, uh, turnaround, huh? It was short, but she was ready. So she had I was a beautiful ready. dress. I didn't, want, I didn't want to leave her. I enjoyed, I enjoyed her life very much, and I didn't mm -hmm. want I didn't want to lose her. So I talked you did to good. her. She accepted, and I, we agreed. So I had a huge wedding. But the most amazing thing about all of this in the Navy, you had to get permission to get married. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to send a letter up to my captain. He he just come aboard. So I'm now not the only guy aboard the ship. He wasn't ready yet, but he they put him aboard too. So now I had to go get permission. I said, Captain. I'd like to get married. He said, sure, Robert. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. I know Mary's going to make you a super wife oh, as a captain. <laughs> it's not Mary. Who, who in the hell is it? I said, it's Iris Dupin. What the hell have you been doing bullshitting this woman all these years? <laughs> I said, Captain, you're not supposed to be memorizing my mail. You just censored it. When was the last time you'd seen Mary? Uh, that's another story. I, had, I said, so Mary, I was dating Mary, and Went to school with her. She was mm -hmm. two years behind me. I was dating her when I went into service. And then I, I met her and I didn't tell her about it. But anyway, that's when I got married. I, I come back and she found out I was married and this, she found a sailor in Jacksonville and married him. So when I come home and brought ours home, there really, they become friends. Oh. Absolutely. So there was a big deal there. So our, my grandmother, she knew Mary and they met her. who she when, was. Oh, when we come back out of the we got out of the I, come, I brought Iris home. With yeah. me. I asked Iris, I said, well, you know, I'm getting out of the service in, in, in March of the next year. And what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to stay here? Are we going to go home or what else? She says, well, you know, Robert, I really think it'd be better for you to make before you were raised. It'd be easier for you to make a living. I said, well, okay, that's what you want. 
So, so I did that. I brought her home. I, my father helped me build a home, and I brought her home, and that turned out real good. And then Mary, in the meantime, met this guy and married him, too. So we were both married. She married me, and I was married. But her and Mary become great friends. That's good. And then he had to go back home, and we lost track of her, too. Yeah. Well, you know, you marry, when you're marrying Grandma, my grandmother was pretty well off, and then he takes her back to his farm. <laughs> How did she do there? I, I, it was a life changer for her, you know that, right? A super change for her. I lived in the city of New Orleans all her life and never done And another, she had great parents. Mm -hmm. When I married her, she didn't even know how to boil water. She couldn't cook, she couldn't they make bread. for that. No housekeeping. <laughs> her mother did that for her. But and she then. she learned how to do all those things and did a mess the job of it. And so when I moved her out and moved over to Algiers before, it took us a while to get out. It had its pictures on it. It took us a while to get out. And so when I moved her out of her mother's home and I got my own place next to the base, I got tired of my mother-in-law. So I come home to that apartment, I had a back apartment, and I went around back and there was burnt food everywhere. And rice, burnt food. And she'd been cooking and throwing it out, cooking and throwing it, she couldn't get it. And she was boo-booing. She was booing. I said, look, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll go down here to have her. Yeah, we'll just go from cut to eat. That probably went on a few times. Yeah. So why why'd you get tired of your uh, your mother-in-law? Oh, that's not talking about that way. But anyway, I, I escaped that okay. place, and, and she was a, a plain bitch. Okay. <laughs> Very dominant, uh, everybody, including Iris and everybody else. So that's probably why Grandma uh, wanted to move to Jacksonville. Maybe that's sense. really good. But, New, I'm telling you, just hearing this, that's what it was. She, she wanted... No, she wanted to go to work. It would be easier for me, and she was absolutely right. And that too. I, I made a choice after almost four years in Elvis. I made a choice to either work, go ahead and make it a military career. I didn't have but 16 years to go to retire. And I got tired of the saluting part, and I, and it, and I said to myself, I'm going to go home. So I went home, and that was a great move. Yes. But she made friends with everybody quickly, and she wasn't going away. My father worshipped the ground and she worked for Oh, on. She's like my son. There is there's no strangers. She can definitely talk to anybody. You my remember son, that? Oh yeah, my son's just like her. <laughs> and and I'll tell you too how how gifted she was with Gab. Mm -hmm. And she meet anybody. She used to go to the pancake house every morning and she loved football. We used to go to the pancake The Saints. House. My grandma knew had knew everything about the Saints, pretty much anything about football. She had the memory new players or stats i mean there's no one everything. no one on earth that probably beat her in everything in football yeah, so, trivia and so we then there on sunday morning mm -hmm. after the game was on saturday yeah, and then monday morning so one monday morning we was in there for breakfast and she struck up a conversation with a guy behind me it had to be hugh coverhouse the owner of the oh, bucket yeah. from that day on hugh coverhouse had him a guest every monday morning at that restaurant <laughs> He loved her, and he loved to talk to her. Okay. What, a, what a blessing She probably gave him some advice about the team. <laughs> yes. She's like, listen, this is what I'm seeing. Yeah. you got to stop that. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, y'all, how long were y'all married? It was, y'all were married a long time. 65 years. Yes. My and grandmother so, passed away 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah. So, uh, about the seven, about the... About the second year, after, first year after she's dad went in there one night, went to church one day, so I want everybody to stand up and was married. Mm -hmm. And it, it, they gave out the length of time, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, and I'm still standing. I said, nobody was standing. The priest said, would you mind telling us how long you were married? I said, 65 years. So and that's impressive. That's my goal. Well. I married late, so I don't know if I can make 65 years, but I plan on being married a long time, my whole rest of my life, because of you guys, yeah. seeing the marriage y'all had. You, you've got the genes for it. So for the old age? Yeah, yes, I do. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah, pretty much all our family lives a long, good yes. life. Yes. Well, you know, we, we stay healthy. The most amazing thing about her, Iris was uneducated. She, did, she didn't do well in school, didn't mm -hmm. do any, anywhere. She, she didn't want to study. She didn't know well in school anyway, oh, but she, where I get that from. she she read the newspaper and she was knowledgeable about the world and the all activity, reading that paper. 
And that was a must that I have to have to stamp the Tribune, even if we were traveling. Uh, that's how she got her education. So but, now that you're, you know, my awesome grandmother passed away 10 years ago, and you, we always thought it would be you going first, not her. <laughs> you were like, so we're like, oh, because we figured you couldn't live without her, which you, he had a hard time, but he decided to just go out there and start, you know, you live an amazing life now, even though I know you miss my our, your wife every day, but you go dancing, you have a fulfilled life right well, now. When I finally realized that I was going to have longevity because I was healthy, yep. and hard work and in great diets is what made me healthy, and and exercise and whatnot, and so I, I was falling by the wayside after a couple of years. Yes. I get lonely and lonely and lonely. Yeah. And lo and behold, somebody said, you need to start dancing. So I started taking lessons, and that was the greatest thing you ever happened to. I've never been lonely since. No, you just, I mean, what's funny about this, I'll be on Facebook, not even, you know, not realizing he's on it. I'll, was it the Victory? The Victory ship has, like, galas and dances. And next thing I know, I'm seeing my grandpa. Cruising. Yeah. My, he didn't even tell me he was on it. I find him on Facebook just dancing up with the ladies, and I'm like, look at him. He has more of an active Facebook page than I do. What happened was, I, I met Corson, and he's the leading DJ in this city, mm -hmm. in this state of Florida. He has the largest dances ever, 6,000 at the USO show. Wow. And they, they, the port of directors directed him to put mm -hmm. a ship crews that was dancing on the ship. And I was lucky enough to be selected by him to host the ladies aboard that ship. And I did. Every time that ship sails, I'm aboard it as the hostess for the for the ladies. And also, I have the privilege of, with Corson to invite the ladies that's going to be the hostess for the men. So I'm in great demand. Yes, you are. And so yearly, and that's going to come you young again. men need any advice about how to treat women, this is it. He's still doing it at 93, and he has a very lovely lady now that takes care of him, and she's awesome. You're, you're just lucky. She, she is, she is the most beautiful lady in this city. She's the greatest dancer in this city, and the best dressed in this city. And so I'm truly blessed to have her companionship. Yeah, she's wonderful. Yeah, you know, well, you know, you, you know how to treat women. So. Yeah, we're talking about Christy Berger too. She's still on the scene. And yes. we're going, we've been invited to go to the Glacier's first silver dance, formal dance, coming up in September 20th. That's right, and he already has his tux. I was like, I'll go with you to go. go. He already has one. Christy already right. has her formal dress. I already got my tux ready to yeah. go. It's going to be like and senior prom. We're going to have to get pictures, Grandpa. And there will be a lot of great celebrities there, including Tony Dungy, probably. And you. And me. Yeah, yeah you're a new <laughs> YouTube star. We're going to make no, you no. one. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm counting on that. Yeah, I'm gonna know. He's he's all I'm about it. I'm gonna get paid, right? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> in fact, but you know popularity. what? You'll get, you'll get paid in um, people liking you. <laughs> uh, I, and, and that's been and a very popular. You. So yeah. the ship always had USO ladies on it, and a lady by the name Christy Burbage is on that ship, mm -hmm. and and there I met her, and I'm all over YouTube with her, and every time I go to the USO dance, she's a USO lady. So I'm very popular with great dancers. I love it. Well, this is um, our four-part series. We're ending it now, but we're going to definitely come back for an update next couple weeks and find out what else he can tell us about, about in the 40s and 50s. I mean, I like to keep the history, you know, alive. And, and, and I congratulate you on your interview. It was awesome. You do a super job. Well, it's easy when it's your I'm, I'm honored to be privileged to you, you desire my company companionship and my history is awesome. Well, you, tell you the truth, um, this is how I get you to tell me because all these years, you know, I've known you, I, these are the first time a lot of these stories I've ever heard. So I love it. And it's going to be good for our, your great, 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 great grandchildren. They will all great, listen to this. Great, great, great. Hi, guys. So I'm in about, what, my third, my fourth generation of family right now. Yes. With your children. Yeah. That's, that's awesome, too. Yeah. I'm privileged to know that I've lived a life to where I'm in the grace of God, which has extended my time on this earth. Well, you know John McCain, right? The, the yeah, senator just yeah, passed away. He was a great Navy um, he, he was. man. He was. His mom is 106, and she looks beautiful. She still looks amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, your generation's living, you know, yeah. if you live healthy, you're all living long. And, and he, he, had the, he had the genes for it, mm -hmm. the cancer got him. So, yeah. 
So I've got the genes for longevity. Yep. And I don't know what my mission yeah. God has for me on this earth, but I don't want to find it too soon. Yeah, because you're I'm prepared, fun. but I'm not ready to go. Well, I think a lot of it, because me being a medic for a long time, and I've dealt with a lot of people in nursing homes, a lot of people that live alone, most of it is having an active mind and having friendships and having somewhere to show up to every day, you know, having something to look forward to. It, the, you know, and you have all that. And you have family that still is close by and then a, a girlfriend that's here all the time. And, you know what I'm saying? it's And then dancing. And then you have ga galas you're going to. You have something to, you know, I to do. look forward to. I do. And health. Is and well, 100% health. Yeah. But you also mentally have to be there. Mentally, you, you want have to, to have fun. Look, you just said you're not ready. So I still have stuff I want to do. I think uh, that's awesome. I, I'm... I'll do what God ever wants to. I mm -hmm. just don't want to leave yet. I'll, 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 I'll go I'll know. I have some more. I'll go a few more dances. And I have a few more talks I want to do a with you. A few more talks to you. <laughs> You're, and I tell you, like I said earlier, I've been in Buda many a time. The last in, interview I had, other than you, was with the Tampa Tribune. They did one super job. And yeah. you have done a better job than Tampa in Tribune. You hear that Tampa Tribune? I've been mean, really impressed with your skills. I could be y'all's YouTube reporter. Absolutely. <laughs> in my book, you are. Oh. All right. Well, we'll see y'all soon. Thank you. So long. So long.